Hello, everybody. How are you all doing today? For those who don't know me, my name is Nana Dalkuma Sekiyama, and I'm the author of The Sex Lives of African Women. I am also co-founder of Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women, a platform that creates space for women to share their experiences around sex, sexuality, and pleasure. We live in a world that overwhelmingly seeks to restrict and control women's sexuality. This is done in a number of ways. Firstly, from what we are told, or indeed not told about sex growing up. Many of us, myself included, did not receive anything approaching comprehensive sex, and sex education while we were growing up. On the contrary, what we were told, that is even if we were told anything at all, were a mixture of partial truths and misinformation. For example, when I first got my period, I was warned that I now needed to be very careful and that I could easily fall pregnant if I messed around with boys. Nobody said to me what messing around with boys was. And so, you know, when you start your period, it's very normal for your period to not be regular. So I started my period and then like a month or two later, I didn't get my period and I was so scared. I thought that meant I was pregnant even though I hadn't had sex with a guy, right? And I was in a Catholic boarding school, which like you can imagine comes with its own levels of trauma. And so I would go to the convent every day and pray that my period will come back. Like I could weep for little and a dark one who did that, right? I was literally scared. And then, you know, I grew up and I was like, oh, there isn't an automatic connection between sex and pregnancy. In fact, as an adult, you could be having sex with a you know, with a goal of falling pregnant and you could really struggle. So I think it's seriously an issue that we automatically link sex and pregnancy. And also, you know, this automatic link that has been created between sex and pregnancy, I think makes it difficult for people to realize, oh my God, sex can be so much more. You can have sex just for the fun of it. You can have sex because you want to relax. You can have sex as an act of love you know, and pleasure between you and your partner or partners. You can have sex for all sorts of reasons. You know, I think the important thing is obviously we find ways for sex to be safer and healthy and sex should only be on a solid, solid bedrock of enthusiastic consent. People can have sex because it is their job. There are so many reasons why people have sex. And so this link between sex and procreation is a false one that I think we all need to unlearn. I think for all of these reasons, the fact that we really don't get told anything about sex growing up, we all need to go on a journey of self-discovery where sex is concerned. And I think journeys are very personal. Everybody's journey really depends on who the person is and where they wish to arrive, right? I also think in many ways, you know, the best thing about a journey is the process, is what you learn along the way. It's not really about this destination. And I think when it comes to learning about sex, there really is no final destination. I think what works for us in one phase of our life will be completely different for what works for us in a different phase of life. So for me, the interesting thing about journey and self-discovery with sex is it's continuous. I think it starts with, first of all, questioning everything you've been told about sex, especially what you were told growing up. And I think it's super important to create spaces for us to learn and unlearn. Um, since my book came out, women have been telling me what the book has meant to them. And I think my favorite comment is how people have said it's making them question, you know, the sexual experiences they've had, it's making them question their sexuality, it's making them learn. People are telling me they've learned things they didn't know about, they've learned about the lives of women who are different from them, they've learned about different terms and expressions and gender identities, and that makes me really, really happy. There are also so many resources by African feminists when it comes to sex and sexuality. And I want to share some of my favorites. They include The Quirky Get Quick Guide to Having Great Sex by Tiffany Mugu, A Guide to Sexual Health and Pleasure, Dr. T, A Guide to Sexual Health and Pleasure by Dr. Klaleng Mufu Kang, The Spread Podcast by Kaz, African Sexualities Reader, edited by Dr. Sylvia Tamale, and the queer African reader edited by Hakima Abbas and Sukari Akin. 
And so if you want to start your journey of self-discovery, these are some of, some of the resources, as well as my own book and blog, Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women, that I recommend you check out. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. If you have questions, put them in the chat. And what's really great is IPP FAR is doing a campaign. And so there are going to be so many resources by all of these incredible people about sex, sexuality, and pleasure. So check out the whole campaign.